Well, Mayor, what is your announcement today? So I've decided that I will not seek a second term. You know, 2020 has just been a brutal year, but we have some really tough months ahead of us. We still have to fight COVID. We've got to deliver a vaccine. And we're gonna have the really hard job of rebuilding our economy, our downtown, and continuing all the work on equity. I could have spent the whole year campaigning to keep the job, or I can focus all my energies on doing the job. And I think there's only one right choice for Seattle, and that's for me to do the job. Why, why make this announcement now? We, we talked last year, and, and you said you were planning on re-election. You actually filed the, the paperwork with the city and the state in February. Uh, why make this decision now? Everything in Seattle and across America has changed since February. And as we've seen, we have just been through the most unprecedented times in our city's history, a global pandemic that has wreaked havoc across our city, an economic crisis that resulted. So many small businesses and workers have lost their jobs. Our downtown and so many businesses have closed up. And then we have so had a civil rights reckoning. All of these challenges continue. Um, it will be better. There's hope on the horizon with a vaccine, but we have so much work ahead of us. And my job as mayor is to really do what's in the best interest of the city. I believe focusing my energies on tackling those tough problems is my, what I need to do for the city. But obviously the timing, uh, you, you have more than a year left in the term and, and six months before you would actually have to file anything. I mean, there's, there's got to be a reason why you would make this kind of declaration now. I think we need to have, you know, take politics off the table as best we can. We've been through a really very difficult year. And I think that Seattle's reflected a lot of the nation in having really divisive politics. I want people to know in this coming year, I'm going to make every decision based on what's good for the people of Seattle and what we need to do to reposition ourselves to not just come out of COVID, but to build back better, stronger, and more equitable. But it will not be easy and it takes full time energies. How much of this has to deal with the fact that there were marches to your house, that you're, you're, there was graffiti uh, in, in your neighborhood, threatening graffiti, death threats, uh, and, and a lot of pressure put on you personally uh, at your house? I mean, how much of this decision weighs, uh, is weighing on that? Those factors did not lead to this decision. Um, I do think they should lead to a conversation in our city about how we get past some of the toxic politics. Um, and it was not just me. Uh, you know, we saw various council members where people came to their homes and marches and protests is part of who we are. But spray painting hate speech or doing other kinds of vandalism, we've got to get beyond that. I had both the president making threats and, and that kind of activity. But again, my focus is what's best for Seattle next year. And I think that that means all of us pulling together. We won't come through this if we can't pull together as a city. We, if we really wanna build a more equitable and prosperous city, we have to come together on our shared humanity and our shared values. And that really will be my focus. But at no time in the last few months did, did your family say, hey, this is, this is tough for us too, to, to deal with this kind of stuff outside our front door? It's been absolutely difficult for my family, but this has been a tough time for everybody in Seattle. Nobody um, has gotten through this year without a lot of challenges. And of course, I believe that public officials and their families shouldn't have to go through the kind of toxic politics that we've had. You know, the death threats and the hate mail and the, the hate speech painted at your house. But at the same time, my focus really has to be on what's better for Seattle. And I believe that, I truly believe that I could either spend all my energies campaigning for the job, continuing kind of that politics cycle, or I could really focus on doing the job. And I think the right thing for Seattle is us to pull together to examine what we learned from this last year and make sure moving forward, we build a better city for everybody. Did you intend this to, to be a, just a one-term situation for you or did you have longer term aspirations when you first ran for mayor back in 2017? When I ran for office, I did it because I thought our city was at incredible crossroads and I was right. I just didn't realize how significant it was. We saw growing um, economic inequity and prosperity that wasn't shared. 
I came in in a leadership crisis and at a time when there really was a tale of two cities. We got to work trying to build equity with free college you know, tuition, $1.7 billion in affordable housing, programs to get people employed, free transit for our youth. Uh, but we've seen that COVID really accelerated the inequities, not just in Seattle, but across our country. And coming back gives us the obligation to really make sure that we make choices that seek to close those gaps. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, I mean, what do you, what do you think your accomplishments have been over the course of the past three years? I think, you know, my accomplishments, but more importantly, the accomplishments for all the people working in the city, but the residents and businesses of the city is, we reflect our values. Our city taxes itself for the things it believes in. We've taxed ourselves just this year and the toughest years we've had to have better transit. We tax ourselves so every youth can get a free college and we've doubled the amount of preschool classes. And each of those programs has really helped some of the most disadvantaged members of our community and particularly our communities of color who didn't have access to good quality healthcare or pre-K or to school and college. So we have made a lot of gains, but we also know we've got a long ways to go. You know, Chris, I believe that we are in a time more transformative than the industrial revolution. We have seen our economy shift in such fundamental ways and COVID accelerated all of that. And with that acceleration, we saw in really stark relief the inequities. And so if we want to build that city of the future that really share, shows our values, that means making some hard decisions now and really taking the time to come back and come back better. So what do you do here in the next year, uh, dealing with uh, what is going to be uh, most likely another budget deficit, issues with the police department, a push to cut more funding from the police department. Uh, also the idea that department heads and, and employees may not want to come to the city of Seattle with so much uncertainty over who the next mayor may be. So how do you, how do you approach this, this last year of your term? I think that the last year we've all been through 2020 has shown how important it is to have steady leadership and to have a thoughtful approach to how we deal with these challenges. And we have gone through with the COVID, with the economic crisis, with the civil rights uprising, we've had to tackle more than a city's ever had to tackle. Our city should be so proud, for example, of what we did in COVID. We continue to lead the nation. There was no playbook. There was no help from the federal government, but yet we've stood up our own free testing sites where by the end of this year, there'll probably be 500,000 tests um, done. We, we were able to give relief to small businesses, grocery vouchers to, to 14,000 families, change how we deliver hot meals to seniors. And we have to bring that same kind of innovation and that same kind of energy in the coming year to make sure that we as a city can really pull together on our common values and tackle these problems because they're significant. You know, a lot of people believe that because the vaccine is on the horizon that we're out of the woods, but we probably won't see most people in Seattle vaccinated till at least the middle of the year. Between now and then, we've got to be able to focus and the mayor has to be able to focus on what's right for Seattle 24 seven every day. Um, and that can't happen in the midst of a campaign. So last question, uh, and it's a difficult one because it, 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 you're, you're talking about going past 2021, but you know, the, you and I both know that polls have been done for, for potential candidates in this city and head-to-head -head matchups with you. Uh, who, who is next? Who is out there? Who, who is of like mind uh, of, of Jenny Durkin uh, for potentially becoming the next mayor? I think you will see a number of people who emerge. There'll be a lot of names bandied about, but the important thing is we've got to judge who's the, who's the next person who can provide that level of leadership, who's, who's been tested and who can show from their experience and their reaction to situations that they're going to guide us because I'm really hopeful by the end of next year, we'll have laid the foundation for a very strong recovery, but that recovery will take years. And moving forward, we need to make sure we still focus on the same things. We still haven't beaten COVID. We've got to do that. We've got to restore our economy, particularly for small businesses. We've got to bring people back to downtown Seattle so that when people start to travel, they want to come to Seattle. 
And then we have to tackle the really hard work of policing and equity, um, fix the West Seattle Bridge, the pier. But there's also really hopeful things. You know, we continue to move forward on a waterfront for all, which will transform our city in many ways. We'll have a new arena, um, the Kraken and the championship storm. We'll have a lot of things that we can grab and hold on to. But at the same time, we've got a lot of hard work together to do it. And that I can't emphasize enough. It really requires all of us to put divisive politics aside to focus on both our common humanity and our shared goals.